we have a request from the brothers in at Etikaf that we uh, shorten the c- class for today uh, and give them more time and ourselves more time to engage in personal ibadah. And so, inshallah, we should be done by 5, 6, 15, about half an hour before Asar, if that's okay. So we will be doing that then. <coughs> Uh, this is a long, complicated discussion, and something kind of prompted me to start with a basic introduction, which I think would be adequate for today, before we get to the complicated discussion. What I've set out here is simply an introduction to riba as we understand it today. So it's not connected to riba as it existed in 7th century Arabia. Our understanding of riba today, I can tell you almost categorically, is not connected to the past. And the objectives in the past are different from our objectives today. So these are things that I, I want to share with you, that on the one hand, we are trying to make the best with what we have. Like we said yesterday, in, in, in our situation, we are simply living within a legal framework that is hostile to our values to, the, to a large extent. And the best we can do is reconcile that. So that's where we find ourselves. You got that, right? Whereas at the time of the Prophet wasallam, he was establishing a brand new social-legal framework. You see the difference? You don't. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing was not providing housing and car loans. He was establishing a brand new system. And that brand new system required a great deal of creative thinking and it took almost 70 or 80 years before it was, it matured. So it matured long after the Prophet ﷺ had left this world. But he had set the, the basic foundation for the system. Because remember, you, if we are saying Islam, you can't have it both ways. You can't say Islam is a total system that addresses all our eventualities, both present and future, and, and then restrict Islam to something that fits our understanding in the year 2022 in the Western world. You you see the difference? So so that's that's the point of departure. Our understanding is that that, uh, there's a blanket prohibition on riba, that riba is haram entirely. There are obviously people among in the community who don't agree with that, but I'm giving you just the, the standard version that riba is haram, entirely and and therefore we should avoid riba at all cost if you have any questions please ask the other is that riba is universal and timeless that our understanding of riba from the text themselves is such that it applies to all situations at all times do you understand what i'm telling you here no so it would be fair to assume that people in Europe engaged in business transactions that fall into a category that we call riba in the 8th century, 12th century, 15th century, 19th century, and so on. And therefore, their interpretation, let, let me give you an analogy to make it simple. The taking of a life, let's call it murder, right? Is universal in that we we have a basic definition of what taking of a life is. Somebody aggressively, either, uh, immediately we're going to start modifying it, either intentionally or unintentionally take someone else's life. You would agree that all human beings throughout time have have agreed on this. Does anyone not think so? 
more or less, I'm, I'm taking up, you know, it is a very, this is a very broad canvas. It runs throughout human history and it covers so much. You, you understand what I'm saying? That in terms of killing, all human beings agree that it is the aggressive taking of someone else's life. Can we agree that there is such a definition of riba that existed from the 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, 10th century, 11th century? You understand what I'm telling you now? Like it was easy for us to find a definition for killing, do you think it would be easy to find a definition of for riba? That's my point. That's the, that's the point. That is the most important point of discussion today amongst scholars about this, this whole issue. When we v translate the verse of the Quran, Yamhaqullahu riba wa yurbis sadaqat. Allah condemns riba and or he, he causes it to stultify, to, to shrink, and he gives life and efflorescence to to ch charitable giving, or uh, the other verses, and we will, uh, when inshallah, when, when we have the time, not today, but in, in the future, in pr perhaps tomorrow or the day after, uh, we will look at those verses in detail. But here's the point I'm making. In all of those verses, the word riba is a constant. It's there. Get it? And the assumption is, particularly the first one, blanket prohibition, that this riba that the Quran speaks of is the riba that existed in Arabia in the 7th century, in Europe in the 7th century, in Africa in the 9th century. Do you understand where I'm, where I'm going with this? That's why I gave you the analogy of killing. That I think we can agree on what the, what the commonality, common definition of killing is, that we can universalize it. Yes, the, can we universalize a definition of riba that would be consonant with the definition of riba in the Quran itself? You get the point? That's not easy. That is not easy. So already you see that when we're talking about riba, and I, and I have to say this because, you know, there's some prominent scholars out there who have who are very categorical about that riba is riba and it's haram. And that's a full stop. It's not open to discussion. I, I, I hope we have the time and you have the forbearance to, to stay with me. Uh, I know that Ramadan is kind of, you know, so I, I, know, I hope you can just keep some energy for a few days. Uh, you know, you say, well, well, I mean, Islamic government in Pakistan, huh? the first thing they should do is what? Ban riba. Saudi Arabia, they should ban riba. That's easier said than done. That is easier said than done. So what I'm doing today is simply setting out to you our mindset, how we think, both at the mass level as well as scholarship. That there is a standard portable, here's the nice word, Portable definition of riba. You can get it now. You can take it all places. You can take it at all time. It would apply. And I want you to think about whether that is is the case or not. Simply just using your own understanding of history, common sense, and so on. If that is the case, number one. The other thing is that it, as, as a result of this, we have come up with alternatives to it as a result of our, these two things, that, uh, that the Quran and Islam totally bans riba, and uh, that we should avoid it, we have decided to go with alternatives. And one of the most common alternatives is a cash-only lifestyle, which is actually a very good lifestyle at a personal level. At a personal level, there is no better lifestyle than a cash-only lifestyle. For one, you have no bookkeeping problems. And you, and you know, the problem with a cash, with a credit card payment is you can't really see how much it's costing you. All you're looking at is, is numbers being written down. 
but if you have to fork out of your pocket, it helps. So I, I, I agree that at a very basic level, it, it makes a great deal of sense to go on a cash only. And some of them, especially in, in the community where I spend most of my time, they're people who, very, very good business people. I, I, I think I should share this with you. Extremely good business people, brilliant business people. But, but their portfolios are very small because they don't believe in anything other than cash. So here's, here's the number one option for them. They would then open up a small business, cash only. You have to have some accounting because of government re requirements and things like that, but otherwise it's all cash. And then you would accumulate a, a certain amount of cash, buy yourself a piece of land, then accumulate more cash, then get the plans passed, put up a building, and so on. And you know the, mo the toughest part is always the first building. And once you've gotten that, then you've got an asset base, but you can't use that as collateral because you're not going where? You're not going to the bank. So your entire process is being cash funded. Entire, your entire process is being cash funded. So whereas someone else could be onto his fifth, sixth, or tenth building, you, you're still working towards paying off your, your, you're not paying off anything because it's all cash, but in, in, in uh, paying for the building and construction of your second building and so on. So even in the commercial world, that's how they do it. The second thing that happens when you go on the cash only uh, 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 option is you have your own circle of business people that you deal with. So you would have somebody who'd supply you, but because he has the same mindset, he understands that he would supply you on cash and you would give him cash. And so that, that ring grows and grows and grows, but obviously it cannot, because it does not have the, 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 the modern banking system involved in it, it does not have that capacity to scale. So it, it stays within a particular confine. Uh, I don't know enough about business in, say, the, I would love to know how people in, in, in uh, Hamtramck and these places who are, who are conscious, riba conscious, how they engage in, 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 in business practices here, yeah, because you de develop your own culture then. It's a, it's a very different way of doing business, but, but it is done. It is done. So that's, if you have any questions, you can ask me, that's cash only. And if you have to, then you, ex you, then, then you uh, uh, exercise the principle of durura. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that tells us, al-dururat yubihul mahdurat. That need or necessity or emergency situations, they make har halal that which is generally haram. So you know this because if you are, in, in, God forbid, in some place and you have nothing to eat, then you, just, you can eat whatever is available, even if that is un, unacceptable, or unacceptable, unacceptable or haram under normal circumstances. So this is now the scholars giving you uh, certain facilities which they would otherwise not allow you. This is, well, if you're not by the means, then you, have, then you are allowed to do this. They have extended that, relaxed the rule, so even in America, you have two or three options in buying a house. So the one option is the Barura option, which is where the scholar will allow you to take a financial loan from a bank, a, a regular bank, in order to buy one house only. Because they, they, they're mindful of the fact that a community without an asset base is a weak community. And having a, a house is, is, the, is the beginnings of, uh, of developing an asset base. So they have, this is already in the, uh, in the 80s when they've, they've passed this fatwa saying that you are allowed to own one house based on this kind of interest-bearing transaction. Get it? The same then went to buying a, 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 a car, for instance, and so on. But all, all within the restrictions that are generally placed on the Darura principle. So just le think about this, remember it as the Darura principle. So we, generally there's a blanket haram, 
and then you have the different options coming out and one of them is obviously cash only the second one would be the dorura principle where you are allowed under very strict circumstances to ex to to engage in an interest bearing transaction any questions so far no and then you have institutions being established this is when our under, when our understanding of economics grew and we became permanent features in the United States or in Europe or in other parts of the world, and even in the, in the Muslim world, where we says what we have to do is establish alternatives. I don't have this here, and maybe I should do it right now. These alternatives form, form in, fall into two categories. There's what is called Islamic financing and Islamic investments. And the two are not the same. Or the other, uh, other word for Islamic financing would be Islamic banking. Islamic banking and Islamic investments are not the same. Islamic banking is the easier one to explain. There is very little that is incompatible between Islamic uh, investments, that's what it is, yeah, Islamic in, uh, of, uh, and uh, Islamic uh, and, uh, and uh, the practices that we engage in. There are not too many in incongruencies there. You generally follow the very same principles that you would follow. If you're investing in the stock exchange, for example, then your conscience would determine that you not engage, you not invest in casinos, in, in, in companies that engage in alcoholic beverages. And you understand what I'm saying? So, so all, the, all the things that you generally consider haram, what happens with an, is, uh, with, with an invest in, investment company is they're able to pool your resources and provide you better guidance. They basically do that. Whereas you're looking around on the internet, asking friends, where should I invest? Should I not invest? Tell me about this company. What happens if it is a 50-50 company? In other words, half its investments are halal, half of it are not halal. This company, in conjunction with scholars, now then you have scholars who are experts in Islamic bank, Islamic financing, they help create a portfolio for you that is suitable to your conscience and your Islam. You get that? That's Islamic investments. And there are companies that just do that. And Muslims invest in that and non-Muslims invest in that as well. Islamic banking on the other, oh, you have a question? How about investing in a cryptocurrency? In what? Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, you have to leave that till we get to cryptocurrency. That's not gonna be today. That's an interesting one. That, has to, that is the, the crux of the matter that we have to discuss, which is not discussed generally. Generally, people, I, I, the reason I gave this to you, and I'm glad I did, is because that's how you understand Islamic financing, isn't it so? And Islamic riba and so on. And that's what you assume was the, was the mission of Rasulullah in 7th century Arabia, and it's not. This is not what Rasulullah gave, gave the, 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 the Sahaba in, in 7th century Arabia. This is something that we have kind of put together, a portmanteau. Think of it as an emergency kit that our circumstances require. But that's not it. Again, he was into mission building. He had a, a whole idea of what finance should look like. And it, was, it wasn't supposed to look like this. So we'll answer that when we get there, inshallah. Islamic investment of in Islamic financing, therefore, is a very separate entity. It's, it is generally governed by the rules of, 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 the, of, the, of the country. United States, England, any other country. But those rules are not very stringent. Banking, on the other hand, is very different. Banking has certain strict requirements in every country. In every country, there are banking requirements. And you have to follow those banking requir requirements religiously. You're given a license to bank. And that, and that has to be renewed and it can be yanked at any time if you do not abide by the rules governing it. And the rules are such that at the end of the day, there's not much that distinguishes 
Islamic banking from regular banking. Here's the crux of the matter. When you engage in Islamic banking, because of the rules inherent in, 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 the, in, in, in that system, you are forced to engage in practices that would otherwise be considered unacceptable. But you have no option. Which is why Islamic banking is something that Muslims look towards it, to, to it with some skepticism. He says, you know, what are you doing? This is basically the same thing. But it's not, actually. It's not. This institution building, like you, you, can, you can give me guidance, for instance. You have guidance financial house in this country? That's, an, that's one example of a pseudo bank. It's not an entire bank because you know it doesn't have over-the-counter uh, uh, services. You cannot. It doesn't have uh, cash flow uh, arrangements for you. Uh, it doesn't clear checks for you. But if it does, you, there's another one in in Ann Arbor. I, I forget. It's called universe, university banking. Right. I think they 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 operate as a regular bank. They do right. So you can write out checks and things like that. That's right. Uh, so now, the person from the outside who knows, one of the problems here is this is a bank, economics, finance is complicated issue, very complicated. So the person from the outside, he's just going to look at the big picture and he says, it doesn't, kind of looks like a bank to me. It looks like a bank to me. And to, to a large extent, that is true. The next question he asked, though, therefore, that's a problematic question. He said, well, if it looks like a bank to me, then what? This is just a facade. You know, why not just stay with the regular bank instead of going with this? Is this because if you have this kind of alternative, then the, there's the suspicion that you might be ripped off. Well, you might be ripped off. I don't know that. But I do know that if you want to establish something that is, that is longstanding, then you have, this is how you start it. It's going to be an approximation. And I told you two or three days ago, so much of what we do are approximations. We, you know, we try our best. And somebody quoted the verse of uh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O'abudu Allah ta'atum. You worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to the best of your ability. So when you go to university bank and you invest there, you are fully aware that University Bank is not entirely Islamic. But you're also aware that in, in, my, in me wanting to invest in this bank, I am making a contribution to what I think would grow towards being a better banking system for Muslims in the next 20 or 30 years. So that's the spirit. If you're looking for a perfectly made Islamic bank, there's nothing like that on the face of this earth. But if you're looking at efforts to, to yeah, if you're looking towards for places where efforts are being made to establish that, there are quite a few available. If you're looking for failures, I can show you a lot. Most Islamic banks that have failed. I'm scared to ask you this question, but uh, uh, our whole life is uh, involved in a, uh, in interest riba. Uh, what we eat, it's the uh, uh, same thing, uh, or what we invest, uh, for example, that uh, uh, stocks that we uh, buy, uh, the company may be 100% halal, uh, but uh, no one, as I know, uh, exists without the loans. They have their own investments or uh, financing uh, taken from the loans. Uh, so if you go in any uh, stocks uh, area, you will see 3% uh, short loan or 5% uh, short loan uh, company. Every company has that. So how, uh, how we can avoid it? Same thing that you said, the university. Uh, uh, for example, if I go through them, I'm paying almost uh, uh, five, two, five or half percent uh, more uh, going to uh, Islamic loan, but then finally what they do it, uh, uh, they uh, approve it, and then they go to Fannie Mae uh, to get the, uh, assign that uh, uh, loan. Uh, so it means that uh, we uh, going 
indirectly to the same uh, mortgage company. Okay. So, I think I've answered that in telling you that it, ours is an approximation, it's an effort. Your, your option is, and you can try this, is to go, go to, to option number, yeah. Cash only. And I can assure you that it, cash only is not a niche market. It is a niche market, but it's not inconsequential. There's a vibrant cash only under market that, that through which good and bad, through which funds flow. Have you heard of uh, what you call uh, Hawala? Right? And Ondi? Ondi, yeah. These are all basically cash only systems that are operating. There's good in it and bad in it. <laughs> the American banking system has good in it and bad in it. So that is an option to you, for you. But I can't see us building institutions if we go that route. That's the problem with it. I'm not, I, I, I'm not here to prescribe you know, remedy A or remedy B or remedy C. I'm simply telling you that if we should really be thinking about establishing institutions. And institu because our institutions outlive us. That's the important thing about an institution. And, and, the, and you're, you're, you would have faltering steps. You would be faltering. But here's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught about you. He's taught about you so much that he called you a brother. And his companions were upset. And his companions were upset. He says, glad tidings to my brothers. And he says, but we are your brothers. He says, no, you're my companions. He says, my brothers are those who are going to come after me who have not seen me and will still follow me. So there are, there are ways in which we have an advantage, even over the Sahaba. They're not living in the world you're living, that you just described quite vividly right now. That's not their world. Their world was pure compared to the world you described. What options do you have? Absolutely. You have no options. Everything. It runs everything. What options do you have? Glad tidings to my brothers. They believe, even though they don't see me, and obviously they don't live in the same circumstances. They don't have me as their, as their point of reference. They're sitting here and trying to find the answers to solution, to, to problems that are increasingly problematic, complicated. These things are, you know, I, I think I know a little bit about economics, but I can assure you that's, a, that's how much I know about this stuff. It's so, compl it's so deep and so complicated. Yeah. Can you mention, uh, at the start of the lecture, you had said that the riba that was prevalent at the time in the seventh century in Arabia uh, and those yeah. regions. So what was that riba that was prevalent at that time? Not now. Inshallah, tomorrow the day after. We have, okay. we have half an hour to finish up. Okay. Because like, like I, those who came late, we have to finish early. Okay. Brothers, one more time for Quran reading and things like that. It's called maximizing the investments. Right? So, so, uh, so this is... Uh, there, there's some assumptions that we have to, to remove about this Islamic both Islamic investment and Islamic financing. In, in terms of, or the other way in which you, you the, 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 uh, the complement to the cash free, or the cash only econo economic system that I spoke about, is uh, interest free loans. Qard Hasana. You heard this term, I mean it's a very common term. A Qard Hasana is, purely an act of charity. It has no financial economic, it makes no financial or economic sense. Which is not to say it makes no sense, it just doesn't make any economic sense. It makes a lot of sense because of when you invest, like give it to someone like that, you're not worried about, obviously if, you give, if you're giving me $10,000 and say, you know, pay me back in a year's time or two years time, there's no returns on this. Absolutely. There's no return. There's a total risk on it. Right? There's no return. There's a total risk. And there's a hope that you're going to get paid back. That's a qard hasana. Basically. 
these are the three outstanding features of a qard hasana you can't establish an economy based on that so when people use the term qard hasana we listen to what they are saying are they, are they cognizant of these three things because if they are then you say how, how am i going to invest in, in what you're doing what, what am i doing with, with this money now i can't you know it's it's very it's it's hard to earn money it doesn't come easy and i'm going to give these loans out to people with no expectation of return with no guarantee it's going to be returned and uh, with the hope that it does get returned that's a qard hasana for people who are or persons who are in dire straits it makes sense to give a qard hasana to it makes sense sometimes you give a qard and you or you you just give out money and 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 the returns are enormous but that's not the, the rule so i'll give you an example this this, sh- <laughs> this happens to an alim he somebody comes to him after after salah and he says uh, let's go and have something to eat he says okay he says but you're going to pay for it he said okay so he takes him out and then the alim pays for it cost him about 50 dollars i think and then uh, two years later the guy comes back and says what's wrong he says so they just you know chit chat he says well, i got a leaky roof the alim is saying the building has a le- leaking roof he says okay he p- picks up the phone he calls him and he calls somebody he calls the guy down and a roof guy tells him give me an estimate how much this is this going to cost and uh, so he gave him an estimate and he paid for it over $50,000 he says uh, why are you doing this thank you very much but why he says but you know when i had when i had need you were there he said well, that was $50 he says yeah what well, so that was a lot for you say i'm a businessman and in business it comes and it goes you have good days and you have bad days the outstanding feature of, of business is you know you don't know what to expect you can have all your ducks in a row and you, you, it, it, they, they could still drown that's business as opposed to a secure job you know you go in and earn something and you're going to get your check at the end of, end of the month no matter what happens to the company so he says you know we we hope for the best and allah was very kind to me and i after i left you things opened up for me and mashallah i did well so he, that that doesn't happen i gave, gave you an ex, that example as an exception for the most part you cannot run a vibrant economic system or a country or a society just based on qard hasana so therefore you're left with institutions and one such institution is is the sharia compliant institution and that is an institution that is be, that is both an investment and a banking why is it an investment because to 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 address y- your concerns you want you want some place where you can park your money earn a decent return even if it is not market related entirely but a decent return and 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 the, and, the, and you hope that the person who's ma- doing your investments for you has sound Uh, business skills as well as ethics and so you give it to them so that's how these university bank came about uh, and and so many others some of them have gone upside down like there was one in california that folded and many people lost a lot of money and those are people on this side the investment side because they were looking for places to invest you on the other hand you need to, to borrow for a house so you go to the banking banking arm of that same bo- same company and they're going to give you this house based on the different models they have murabaha and mudaraba and so on we'll talk about that inshallah so that's that's how they 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 structure it so you they're collecting money from from people with a promise that that money will be it's an amana in fact there's one called amana investment isn't it uh, that it is an amana and that we will take care of it and and you are investing it and so they want to see returns on the side so when when they add that 0.25% which is above the the going rate that's in order to pay to pay the investors say so there are two, there are two sides to this and if you're getting collecting funds from investors you can't possibly 
you, you, I know they do allocate a certain amount for this, but you can't possibly be giving out qard hasana willy-nilly. That whole thing's gonna collapse. So I hear this term often and, 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 and I freeze when I do hear it because people don't understand the economic implications of it. I understand the humanitarian implication. It's a good thing. But it's an impl- that if they, uh, there's an economics that's involved. And ultimately, Islam uh, 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 gives preference to the economic element over the, the, even over the human, humanitarian. Even over the humanitarian. You heard of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where a man came to him more than once to ask for, 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 for a handout. And I think he says, I would rather give you a, an ax so you can go out there and chop the, the, your, 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 your wood and sell that. that. What is that? That's economics. In terms, in terms of, 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 of the financial se- se- segment there, that's pure economics. But what does it do to you as a person? It gives you the most important thing a human being can have, dignity. It gives you dignity. Handouts take away dignity. It's a very bad thing. Islam does not approve of it. It does not tell you not to do it. Certainly there are times when you have need. Certainly there are times may Allah protect us from that. But uh, begging is, is, is certainly not something that Islam approves of. Does not approve of it. It encourages you and I to give to the beggar. And if we can establish institutions to get them out of begging, then we've solved two problems. His problem and society's problems. But begging is not something that Islam encourages. So we have to be very careful about that. Right. So I was saying that the owner of Grameen Bank in Bangladesh, Yunus Khan, who got Nobel Prize, and he's working on the Karzi Hasna loans to the poor people, right? Is it not the pure Karzi Hasna model or something else? No, no. There's an interest element attached to that. There is, uh, there's, de- <coughs> there's definitely an interest element attached to it. But he's also, I've, I've done some reading up on him. He is also, he also has a, a uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a transactional relationship. They invest in equipment. The qard is given. They, they call it the qard hasana, which I think is a misnomer. Uh, they, 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 they incentivize this, but what they do is they buy women uh, sewing machines. And then those women have to pay back. Microfinancing, there you go, microfinancing. So it's not, it's not called Qard Hasana, it's called microfinancing. But there is a certain element of, of interest attached to it. But uh, then they pay back that. They've had, they had, initially they had very good success. But then it, 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 it kind of collapsed. It didn't collapse, but it, it shrunk considerably. And I don't know if, I haven't read up after that, of whether, you know, in, in business generally, your, your business life is cyclical. So you have an up and you have a down. Right, right, right now we're, we're talking about the, the, the uh, real estate market is either ready for a, another bubble burst or it's not. That, that's, that's the conversation that's going on in, in, in economic circles in this country. So, but that's, that's how business is. So we are hoping that, that uh, Eunice's uh, uh, attempts are just simply part of a business cycle. That, you know, it, 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 I don't know if it took, up, took over after, took, uh, or not. I, I might be wrong. Maybe there was some scandal attached to it as well. Uh, I don't know too much about it. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. There's it. Okay. Karzi Hasana, as you said in the beginning, uh, is uh, another form of charity because I cannot see that uh, if I. Uh, give a Qarzi Hasana to somebody 100,000 rupees, 
in Pakistan, the inflation rate is about 10 to 15 percent. That money, uh, after a year, will be less value of. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only that, I have to pay zakat on that uh, because it took my money that I loaned. You seem to. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 with, so, taking into consideration all that you've said, you know, the 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 the, the, uh, the blanket prohibition suddenly becomes more complicated. It becomes more complicated. But as we go through the through the discussion, there's one thing I want you to remember: one part of the verse, because nowhere else has Allah said this. Nowhere else. Whatever, however, we understand riba. Allah has not declared war on anyone except people who engage in riba. That's a very powerful statement. So here I am trying to tell you that riba has multiple interpretations and time and place. And, but I, th th this is what I want you to bear in mind at the end of the day when we finish the discussion. Because this is a conversation and we're going to be having it for the next 25, 30 or 40 years. It's part, that, is, that is part of our act of worship. It's, it's how we try to make sense of what Allah wants of us. The world gets extremely complicated and we try to keep up. So this keeping up itself is, is, is an act of worship. Because we don't know the answers to this. Rasulullah has left us with the Quran and he's left us with the ahadith and the sunnah and we try our best to make, to make sense of it. Sometimes we are right, sometimes we are wrong. Okay? So, so yeah, you're absolutely right about that. So what, how, what are the, the, the salient features of that? It's as opposed to, here's a basic difference between a banking system and, 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 and this kind of in, in institution. In, 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 in this particular uh, situation, there is, the risk is shared. The bank, whilst it is not totally risk free, its legal, it, its legal structure is such that that risk is minimized. So when you do buy a house from, the, you can hear me, right? When you do buy a house from the bank, then the bank, the, you might have the house owned by, you might own the house in, on paper, but that house is collateral for the bank, in favor of the bank. And the bank takes no risks on that, which is why the bank would insist that as soon as, that even before you sign off on that house, on that loan, that you get all the insurance in place. That you've done your, 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 what is that, your tests and things like that to make certain that the, the property itself is, is free of, uh, a, huh? Con inspect, you, yeah, you do the inspection and uh, due diligence and you have health checks done. The bank makes certain all of that is done. And then looks at the value of that property in light of the value of the properties in that particular area, and then it also factors in, this is where all the money, the numbers crunches come in, and then they look at that, they say, what are the projections like? What would the market look like? It says, well, under these circumstances, we will give you so much, we will keep the title deeds of this house until this property is paid off, and then and only then you can have the house as freehold on, on, unto yourself. In this, in this particular arrangement, that's not the case. In this arrangement, you and the finance house are equal partners in the building. That's the basic difference between buying a house from a bank and buying a house through Islamic investments. The, the investment house is a sharik, is a partner. So if that, if that, if, if, if you lapsed on your, well, if, 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 this, if, this, if that building suffered some, some damage, or if you lost your job because of COVID and the market went down simultaneously and you cannot pay for the house, the, that your partner is going to suffer the loss equally. 
Now, the bank, I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm also I'm quite cognizant of the fact that the bank is not totally absolved of all of these outside circumstances. Because COVID affects the bank as much as it does other people, although it has greater protection. But the basic structure of the bank is that the bank is not, it is not a risk carrier. You are the risk carrier. OK, any questions there? And then, yeah, yeah. Then obviously, as as your as your payments increase, your ownership share increases as well. We, and we'll talk about that. But that's 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 how it, it's it's that's that's one way of of it. They, they have multiple ways of doing it. This is one way of doing it. Yeah. Compliant investment. They add uh, upfront cost. Uh, they do not consider that like uh, interest, but what is the definition of upfront you know addition of that price into the uh, actual home price and then versus the riba that we get from the uh, traditional banking well i'm glad i'm not working for the investment companies that, that to, to try to explain this because it's certainly cracked like a duck there doesn't it <laughs> I, I i sympathize with them because i'm investing in the company on the other side and i want a decent return and if you consistently give me a, a, a less than favorable return, I will be withdrawing my funds. If I withdraw those funds, the, 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 your, your loan uh, uh, portfolio shrinks. So you, you, see, you see the problem there. The, 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 the managers are sitting in the middle. They have to manage on this side and manage on that side. So how, how do they provide a decent return on this side? By camouflaging that that's basically what what we think is going on it might be it might not be I don't I, I, don't, I don't know if they can be more creative about this but here's what we can do you know I, I know people who would and yes here's, here's another aspect I, I want to talk about before I conclude uh, we can we can factor that in and says fine if I'm paying a, a 0.25 percent extra that's okay I'm willing to do that that's my investment Everyone here is, 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 is taking a haircut. The guy on this side is taking a haircut. I'm willing to take a haircut on this side. You understand? Your, your, your attitude changes. You might get the best person to sit there to manage your funds, and he's not getting paid like he would if he had been working for Chase Manhattan or working for Bank of America. So if, if, and if they, if they actually present their case in that way, people would be more sympathetic to them. It says, fine, we understand. This, this entire project belongs to us. We are just different parts of the same project. At the end of the day, I might not benefit, my kids might not benefit, but inshallah, in the future, someone in my, from my progeny would benefit in something that I've invested now. So I will, I will take a hit now, a modest hit, and, 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 and work towards the future. So we were looking at um, negotiating a contract for a uh, Business and or private? This was business. Okay. And, uh, and we were working with legal counsel. And it was very interesting because in the state of Michigan, I didn't know this, uh, maybe all of you did, but uh, they, they have a, a strict definition that is different of uh, interest versus usury. Yes. And, and, uh, and I found that honestly heartwarming um, to kind of see that. But my question is, um, when we're talking riba, like is, is riba usury? I mean, uh, uh, is it interchangeable or what is that? I'm going to have some fun now. There we go. I want to hear the fun. You came late. <laughs> the fun is on you. Oh, that's fine. But let, <laughs> let me hear. Because, because I what, I did say, what I did say was, this is our understanding of riba. I was here for that. Oh, you were here for that? I was here for that. Yeah, so <laughs> the, this is not, and I will, as I pa unpack this in, in the days ahead, there's a diff different definition of riba that, that was uh, that existed at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Yes, yeah, so because in that in that light, when we're talking about different definitions and different time points, um, when when we first started getting into a home, uh, interest rates at that time were around six to seven percent, and now certainly they've they've dropped significantly. And when you look at the time value of money uh, that you're talking about, that you lose that if somebody, so I mean, you have to get something for for what the money that you're putting in. You can't be, uh, you know insensitive to the fact that people are investing and that they have to have a return on their investment. 
So, but that would be interesting because I think all of us are struggling with that. When we hear the word interest, the blanket statement interest, which I think you're, you're laying it out very beautifully, that, it, that we have to look at that. And, and there may be other ways to interpret that. And we can't just be um, hamstringing ourselves to seventh century. We have to look at different definitions with the eye that we may be wrong, but we're doing the best thing. And, the, and, back and, and, and more importantly, the verse of the Quran, not even the entire verse, but just one part of it. You should always, always keep this at the back. فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ Allah. فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ no, Allah it declares war on you. And this has not, it doesn't have to do with shurb al-qamar, it doesn't have to do with zina, it doesn't have to do with any other thing except for riba. So you have to tread very, very gently. So I'm the one who's telling you that there's a misalignment in, um, this is my opinion, I'm not, this is not a fact, in my opinion, there's a misalignment between our interpretation of riba and the original uh, interpretation of riba. And I, I, I will explain that to you uh, in, in, the, in the days ahead. But in trying to find the right answer, you have to tread very carefully. Our, 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 our knee-jerk response is to say, you know, just look at, is this, is this system just or not just? At a personal level, it might be just or unjust. But there's a, there's a, there are multiple levels to riba, even in the, the modern interest-bearing system. And I'll quickly go through them because I don't want to spend too much time on it. There is, for, he just brought this up now. So we're talking about personal riba. If, n pay attention to most conversations. They are just, they have to do with personal riba. Maulana Maududi, may Allah g give him the highest place in Jannah. He wrote an entire book on riba. It has to do with personal riba. But that's not, the, that, that's just one sliver of the global economy. You have corporate riba, transactional riba. Transnational riba. Very, very different animals, all of them. And then you have the Bretton Woods Agreement. You have the World Bank. You have the Inter International Monetary Fund. You cannot look at riba down here unless you're telling me that this is what Allah meant by it. The world has grown like this. Just the Bretton Woods Agreement has changed the face of riba. The World Bank, the IMF, they all, they have their tentacles in every country on the face of this earth. And the entire structure is predicated on riba. So we cannot be reducing riba to this little section here. We can do that to solve our problems. If we do that, alhamdulillah. But understand that we're doing it to solve our problems. But to get a better understanding of what Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine wisdom had in store for us when he said فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ, مِنَ الرب, uh, مِنَ الله then you have to look at it much more broadly. You have to take into consideration 7th century Arabia, how the economy developed from there and what a great job that was. The, 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 it was magnificent. And, one, and th that's where you want to bite your tongue, bite your tongue. The Umayyads played a, good, good, uh, played a great role. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at that. Uh, so this is basically a profit and share. The two requirements in, in, that they follow, they should not be gharar. This is the word gharar here, and they should be not be riba. Riba we discussed. Gharar is any kind of uh, misleading, uh, fraud, and things like that. So all of these people who engage in Islamic financing, these are their two concerns that, you know, you don't, you don't uh, mislead people. You don't hide things and things like that. And uh, somebody asked me, are we going to be looking at the etiquettes of business? And I said, we don't have the time for that. Maybe I'll make some time for it. Because I, as I was going through the ahadith and all of the rules on, on the etiquettes of business, it was just, it was really brilliant. The things that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at, you know, it's, 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 think about somebody out there in that remote part of Malaysia or, or Pakistan or India, dealing with a few sheep here and a few goats there and things like that. And those sheep and those goats, they give you little pieces, couplets that are, that are really precious and, and valuable in that they point you towards good ethical business practice. Good ethical business practice. 
So inshallah, we'll wrap up there inshallah, and continue uh, tomorrow or the day after, depending on how exhausted you are.